Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this webinar on evaluating licensing renewals. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to welcome Monique Digbom from the University Library in Maastricht. Um, I attended this session during the UK SG conference in Glasgow in April and I really, really enjoyed it and I thought it would be useful for everyone. So I asked Monique to come and do the same talk for us again. Um, so just in terms of housekeeping, as usual, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat box. Um, Monique is going to look at the questions at the end of the session. Um, if there's any problems on uh, a technical point, if there's an echo or anything, just put notes in the chat box and I'll try and answer them. So um, without further ado, I'll pass over to Monique, who's going to talk to us about evaluating licensing renewals. Yes, good morning. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Monique Digbom, and I'm the licensing manager, the license manager and serials librarian of the Maastricht University Library. Um, what I will do is give you a short introduction into um, this, our Dutch situation. Um, I'll click on to the next slide. One moment, please. Um, our Dutch situation and how we work in Maastricht on the evaluation of license renewals and on what we do um, about uh, rising prices of subscriptions. And I will also tell you something about uh, our national consortium and how it's dealt with uh, negotiations with publishers. And at the end you can ask questions or ask things to me. I'll get the next slide. To give you an idea why, where I am at the moment, uh, the Netherlands is in the northwestern of Europe and the red dot on the map is where Maastricht is. So there is where we are now. Uh, well, what do you know about us, the Dutch? Uh, we live with a lot of people in a small flat country, almost six, uh, 70 million in, in, in inhabitants. Uh, we live here with 190 nationalities and Amsterdam, our capital, is um, number one in the world with 170 70 different nationalities. Number two is Antwerp and number three, New York. Uh, we do not only have a king but also a very nice queen. She's originally from Argentina and we have 13 universities and a royal library. Then the town Maastricht. Um, it's in the very south, deep south of the Netherlands, clear to the, um, uh, very near to the Belgium and German border. Um, it's a very nice town with an old history because it has an uh, early, it was an early Roman fortification. And I guess you all know the story about um, the three musketeers. Or well, maybe you don't, but it's a it's a famous story, and their leader D'Artagnan was killed uh, while he tried to conquer Maastricht. I'll show you some pictures to give you a, um, an idea of the old town. Uh, Maastricht is also very famous because of carnival. Um, it's uh, uh, celebrated for four days every year. And last but not least, um, it's the hometown of the successful musician André Rieu, who travels over the world with his large group of musicians um, and makes many people acquainted with classical music in a very light way. Very nice. Then our university. Um, it was founded in 1976 and we have two locations, two main locations at the moment. Uh, 70 bachelor's uh, programs and 56 master programs. Um, 50,000 students at the moment and 3,500 staff members. We don't have faculties in technical or chemical um, studies, but here you see an overview of our six faculties which are here at the moment. 
Uh, we have a close collaboration with two medical um, libraries in the uh, region of uh, two hospitals. And for them and for the Open University Netherlands, I also do the negotiations with the publishers and we take care of their medical um, digital library. So that's our university library. Um, our teaching method at the university is called problem-based learning, which is a student-oriented teaching method where students have to solve problems uh, themselves in tutorial groups. And after defining a problem, they have to search for additional information outside the group. And this is where the library comes on. What does this mean for the library? Well, the most obvious consequence is that our library uh, locations are provided with all kinds of study places. And furthermore, we have um, a learning and resource center with lots of copies of prescribed books. We have long opening hours, um, a flexible layout, so students can also change the furniture um, when they need to work with different groups. And uh, we have computer and multimedia facilities, of course. And here you see a picture of our medical library, uh, which is also um, used a lot f uh, for these, by these uh, tutorial groups. Um, to tell you something about our, the organization of our subscriptions, we have packages of um, journals of all major publishers. Um, the total of journals of these so-called big deals is over 25,000 titles. And negotiations for these packages are mainly done by Surf Market, which is our licensing bureau of the um, consortium we're part of. And I will tell you more about that in a minute. Then we have our individual electronic titles of subscriptions. Uh, from many publishers all over the world, um, we subscribe to almost 1,000 titles. And for these titles, we do the licensing and administration ourselves. And finally, we have um, our hard copy journals, which are compared to 10 years ago, not so many anymore. Um, these are about 300 subscriptions. And our subscription agent for these hard copy journals used to be Sweats, the company Sweats, for almost 30 years. But, um, well, as we all know, they didn't survive 2014. So now EBSCO takes care of our hard copy journals. And if we talk about sub subscriptions and big deals, we also talk about a lot of money and evaluating content became more and more important. So, do we really need this? That's a good question. Um, the universities of the Netherlands, academic medical centers and the Royal Library uh, make up a consortium called UKB. And the negotiations for journals, for these big deals and databases for this consortium uh, are done by a special office called Surf Market. And Surf Market keeps in close contact with the UKB working group for the licenses and with the publishers, of course. And to give you an example, I'll tell you about the renewal of five big deals uh, at the same time, which started in 2014. Um, over the last few years, a special negotiation teams were formed uh, for renewals of the big deals. And um, at the same time, the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science in the Netherlands made a strong statement for open access and called up universities and publishers uh, to make serious efforts towards uh, open access. And the universities use, these, um, use the current negotiations 
for new licenses to try and convince the publishers that this is the time to make a change. Uh, the proposal of the universities is to come to uh, an op to open access agreements. And this means that the licenses are based more upon uh, paying for publishing instead of paying for reading. Um, we found out that not all publishers are ready yet, yet for this, uh, for this new model uh, or willing to work on it and some of the negotiations were put on hold. Um, but others, well, they tried to work with us on this and uh, with Springer, for example, we reached an agreement on the transition to open access. And the new license will be signed for the next two years and researchers of the Dutch universities will be able to publish and um, in, in the major part of the Springer deal, in the Spr Springer journals, without extra costs and without limitation. Uh, whenever a surf market comes to an agreement with publishers, uh, the universities are invited to join the deal. And what do we do, do we as a library do in the meantime? Um, we think we have to be ready when the proposal comes. And uh, besides that, we want to give a good advice to our faculties about the renewal. Because um, after all, they pay for the content. And um, in, the meantime, uh, in the past, we combined a lot of numbers by hand, which took a lot of time and effort. Um, because we liked the idea of being more in control over the renewal, uh, we decided to take this a step further and build a tool so this machine could do the job for us. Uh, we wanted to throw in all the numbers uh, we thought were important for the evaluation, uh, push a button and then have the answer to all of our questions. Well, at least when it comes to renewing a big deal. What do we need in order to evaluate? Well, when you think of what is, what is important to know, then you can make endless lists of uh, data and involve the most interesting numbers in your decision. But I always ask the question, do we really need this parameter uh, to say yes or no? Does it really make the difference? And it turned out to be it, uh, to keep it as clear and simple as possible. We asked our faculties to um, create a core list, a core, um, a, a list of core titles. They, um, they wanted, they really wanted uh, these titles. We looked at usage reports, counter compliance. Um, we looked at what's in it now, what's in the package at the moment. Um, so in the current deal, what will be in next year when we have to sign a new license. And we, um, we base this um, list on the title lists of Surf Market, so our consortium um, licensing bureau. We looked at impact factors. And, of course, very important, the list prices of the individual titles. Because our main question is, what is the value of the total package versus individual titles? What would it cost if we would subscribe to these core titles only? And what would it cost if we uh, sign a license for the big deal? Um, well, a colleague of mine of the IT department made a tool that makes use of a SQL server. Several lists, all these lists I mentioned here, are stored in the server and updated every month. So as soon as we need an evaluation report, we can uh, use the most uh, updated lists. And there's a match of these data behind the scenes based on ISSNs 
and when we get then we get a report which provides us with the information we need and here you see an, an example of um, how the reports look like we get a column per faculty uh, and then several um, data which we uh, consider in our evaluation how many of the core titles in the deal per faculty how many of the core titles have an impact factor um, how many successful consultations in total and um, these are the full text article requests how many successful consultations uh, of the remaining titles and of the core titles the costs per consultation and important data um, list prices of individual individual titles so what does the package deal cost and what would if would it cost if we would subscribe to uh, core titles only and the tool calculates if it's cheaper to subscribe to individual titles that are listed by faculties um, as a core title um, or if it is it cheaper to subscribe to the big deal so what we found out is that we pay 40 up to 40 percent less for a big deal in comparison with individual titles and besides that you get much more title in a package as you all know and we also found out that these extra titles which are not on the on the core title list of the faculties are being used a lot so it's the overall package that is of great value um, but nevertheless it's obvious that it can go on with price increases as we faced last years in times of decreasing budgets so I think we all agree that renewing big deals is not so obvious as it used to be and um, in the Netherlands um, some university cancel packages because they cannot if afford them anymore and strict negotiations are needed and that is what the teams do at the moment well as soon as we get a report from our tool from our machine we give an advice to the faculties and this will be discussed in the library committees of these faculties well next to the evaluation of the big deals we also had a close look at the renewal renewals of individual subscriptions what did we do and try to keep an uh, uh, the increasing increasing prices under control because the prices of individual titles um, rise every year sometimes up to 30 percent just like that um, we undertook several actions what we did is that we approached all publishers um, asking for the reason why the prices increased uh, as soon as they increased 5% or more furthermore we talked to our uh, collection managers and asked them to have a critical look into the subscriptions we have at the moment and possibilities to cancel uh, we asked them to do this as well for a special group of titles the most expensive subscriptions and in order uh, to do this we made a list for them of these most expensive subscriptions um, and we've chosen for um, a proactive approach of the publishers and begin to inform for the prices of the coming year in September instead of waiting for November December when the prices come from um, the publishers well as I said we asked the publishers for the reasons why price increases uh, were up to 5% or more and we collected the most, most fantastic reasons of course some of them must be real like the rise of production production costs 
but what about the rise of the postal costs um, for an e-journal? So these are some of the reasons um, they send us. No increase in the increase of the prices in the last years. So the prices um, were the same for several years and now they said we can't do that anymore so we increase the price. Um, you get more is issues or pages um, than last year. We have to, have to keep us up the pace with others so other publishers ask more for their subscriptions and we have to do the same now. Uh, there is a rise of the cost we made like staff and building in one case they said we don't charge euros anymore but uh, British pounds but in that case um, they still charged the same amount which made it 25% more ex expensive for us um, and like I said the rise of postal costs for an e-journal and the rise of the price of kerosene was also a beautiful reason. But I can tell you that besides um, the irritation we sometimes felt, we had a lot of fun as well. Of these most fantastic reasons. Um, we encountered some barriers during renewals, or should I call them challenges? Um, we could not cancel these core titles of the faculties, which made it harder to negotiate. Um, the publishers of these individual titles are mostly small and didn't have room for negotiation themselves. Um, the prices for the next year are not set before November, December, which made it uh, difficult to cancel um, after high rises of the price and of course we faced adverse exchange rates of dollars, pounds, uh, Swiss francs um, when we compare them to the euros. Um, other important things to have, you have to consider during the renewal process is what is the usage like. Uh, I, we found out it's important to check usage statistics regularly and especially when you have to renew subscriptions and there is no point in paying for subscriptions if nobody uses it. Um, it's also good to look if there is content overlap. Um, maybe you offer two products that are very similar so Here's where the collection managers have a nice job to do. And uh, is there demand from faculty for this product? This is where the core title list for us are important. Um, over the years um, we've had subscription on electronic journals and databases. I've been in contact with many publishers in order to negotiate about the prices and terms. And I'd like to share some basic experiences about this with you. Um, first of all, it's, I think it's very important to build a good relationship with your account manager. And if you have the op uh, opportunity, meet him or her in personal. At your library or at the publisher's house or maybe at... Um, conferences that's also a good place to meet people uh, then be prepared uh, take good care of uh, preparation in advance um, what company is it what products do they have um, and let them inform you about the prices in advance and uh, the possibilities there are What does your user want? Uh, what does your faculty and faculties and students want? Talk to them in advance as well and make sure that they know the products that the publishers um, uh, are able to provide you with. What is your budget? Also a very important question. And what is the limit 
make sure you know the limit because it tells you how far you can go during your negotiations. Uh, first offer from the publisher is an in, uh, invitation to negotiate. So don't accept at once, um, but use this to investigate what's possible to talk about uh, the price and terms of the license. Uh, I think you never have to accept a first offer. Um, use it as an invitation to talk about this with the publisher. And what I often do is make a list of arguments um, in advance. You can use them in order to get the best deal possible. And um, it's not always about the price only, but also about the terms of the license. Um, we in the Netherlands uh, have um, some some things we always want to have in the we really need them in the license and that's that is for example uh, the possibility to do interlibrary loan and to use um, electronic content in uh, course packs so not only the price is important but also the terms of the license Well, in a nutshell, we do see the advantage of evaluating properly and being able to explain what is going on to our um, payers and decision makers. And after all, I think the only way to keep and hold on the expenses is by keep the ones who pay informed. And for us, this concerns the faculties. And together being prepared to cancel subscription when the prices uh, rise too steep and publishers have no space or intention to work with you on a good price, a fair price. Um, I found out also that keep um, talking to the publishers and the suppliers is also very important. Uh, you can tell them what you encounter in your library and um, tell them about the problems you encounter as well. Uh, we work together uh, with other university libraries and surf market close in, um, in our consortium and um, that gives us also a lot of input and um, um, well try to find a way together to uh, handle this. And last but not least um, don't be afraid to cancel titles. It provides you with space in your budget and in some cases it might move the publisher as well. So don't be afraid to cancel. And of course all this without losing our users out of sight because they are the most important group. Uh, they are the, the group we work for and they need the content. So, this is what I wanted to share with you, and um, I hope uh, it was a clear uh, story and um, that you could follow uh, our uh, steps we undertook in order to evaluate uh, licensing uh, content and renewals.